Hello. Hi. How are y'all? You do good. We do, we do good. Yeah. Uh, I missed you, buddy. Missed you too, dude. Yeah. Let's try these drinks. Um, <laughs> cheers. I think they were called the left-handed drink or something. That's actually perfect for us. <clears throat> because yes. we're, yeah. you know, Buffalo. That's, um, it's okay. Kind of tastes like, uh, cranberry juice, but wrong. Yeah. But not bad. Yeah. Just... It's I'm uh, it's um it's the Campari. Every time I've added Campari to something, it uh I don't know if I'm a fan of it or if it's just maybe obviously I'm not. Was that what was in the last thing we had that we didn't like? Ah, uh, might be. I think so. The be- it, this one's well, better for sure. Yes. Um, I might need to start just trying different things with Campari and actually figuring it out because I've had cocktails with Campari in it that I do like. So I just need the right components. You know what we need to do? We need to figure out a drink that makes Malort taste good. Ooh, okay. Well, there is a channel that tried it. I know, I watched. But yeah. it didn't seem to work. Yeah, we gotta try. But we gotta find a way. Eventually. Yeah. Um. So, I, we went on the bur- Bourbon Buffalo Trail... Some of it. We only got through probably a quarter to half of it over the four days. Just about. But, you know, we were taking our time. Our bodies can only handle so much. Um, wow. We did. And like she, I think she explained it. But we did the... Uh, we ended up starting off at Michter's. And we did Evan Williams. Then we did Angel's Envy. In the first day, and then we end up going to a little, uh, it's this, uh, its own private little restaurant that they have their own booze there. I don't know if it's necessary for sale, but they make it in house, and that was really cool. I forgot the name of that, but that was great. <laughs> um, they actually had some of my our favorite food. They had this little shrimp fritter thing. I don't know. It was really good. Um. And then we went to a place called Hell and High Water, or no, Hell and Heaven and Hell uh, Speakeasy. I know that one actually. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to go to that place. That looks dope. It was great. Um, we ended up being sat next to the band that was playing, and right next to the drummer. So I ended up. I think we naturally. Uh, I think Melissa said something about it, and then he was like, "What?" And, uh, all of a sudden, uh, I think he he upped his playing a bit because all of a sudden he he starts throwing in all these extra little things in his hands and he's going a little bit nuts and I can tell because the uh, the saxophone player is giving him not like disappointed. He's just kind of like, I don't know where you're going with this, mm-hmm. so I'm just gonna stand here and look okay. Like I know it's supposed to be like I don't know when to come in. It's when the drummer just fucks up. It was great. Well, the them. keyboard guy was going with him. I mean, it was pretty. He was he was playing to the keyboard, and then the saxophone guy, I think, was just like, "I don't know what I'm supposed to do right now," because he's definitely going a little bit, a little having fun. A little too it was, much, yeah. yeah, it was really cool though, because that made cool. it it made an extra little nice experience. Bunch of really good cocktails. Uh, obviously, they had like a cocktail menu that was just two sides. They had heaven, which was or he- hell. Which is the side I drank out of mostly because that's more of like the stirred drinks like this shit. Yeah. Spirit forward. And then the uh, the heaven one was a bunch of light ones. And so those were really cool. Um, we ended up almost m- not making it home because by the end of the night we had 1% battery on Melissa's phone and 3 on mine. Problem with this is Melissa has all the codes to get into our rooms. So we would have not, we had three different codes that you had to enter because it's whatever the way the Airbnb worked. You walked in through the one side entrance that had its own special door for them. It's a code. And then you have to go up the elevator. There was a code to get into like the floor that has all the rooms in it. Mm. And then there was the code to get into your room. Yeah, so that's kind of the Airbnb yeah. in Miami was like that too, but it was also 
Like it was a bunch of condos that were Airbnbs. It was really just a fucking hotel. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just, uh, and that's what it was. They had, I think they had like ten rooms. Yeah. Pretty, it was okay. Not, not you know, wasn't our favorite, but it was, it 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 worked for the day that we needed it. You know, but um, we ended up um, we made it just in time. I think her phone was like, uh, you know, just plugged in as she was dying type thing. Yeah. But um. Next day, we went to Bardstown, which is where I think you were trying to FaceTime me. I think that would have been the day. Because it was fr- – it was a f- – hold on. I'm going to pull up on my phone. Well, I FaceTimed you at night, and then you FaceTimed me during the day, which I think you FaceTimed me on Saturday because uh, I was hanging out yes. with, uh, with with people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say it was Friday. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, you, you – we were inside of a uh, – a restaurant inside of the uh it was an old rick house and it was called like the rick house a rick house or no it wasn't it maybe some it's designed to look like a rick house a rick house is the building that they store all the barrels in when they age and they store they're generally like six to seven stories tall um and so we went in this little speakeasy it's in the ground so we were below level when you probably tried to FaceTime me. So I don't even think my phone vibrated that it went off. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, because I remember, I would have seen it because I, I did. We had our phones kind of out, but not, you know, mm. and not really looking at them. But, like, it still would have vibrated because I did hear some texts going off. So mm. I think once in a while we were just, like, signaling that room was a little, a little wonky. But had, again, great time, really cool food. Uh happened to be like next to this like really badass church that we walked by um and uh had some of my favorite breakfast fucking just biscuits and gravy eggs side of bologna side of fried bologna because that was an option i was like oh we both me and melissa just looked at each other and were like yo like i want some bologna i like Dude, um, honestly, now that you said that, I kind of want like a fried bologna sandwich. I will say, it, I think they, I would, I wanted a definitely a bit more crisp version of it. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, I also wanted the sandwich. Yeah, a little bit, not of just the size, some mustard. Yeah, it, it, it definitely like it. It kind of hit the craving, but I realized I was like, oh, I want a fucking fried bologna sandwich right now, yeah. not just a piece. So I still ate it, but you know. Yeah. Um, I got very drunk that night too. <laughs> yeah, I I felt bad. Cause I was like, oh, because I I was gonna Facetime you and and have a drink with you. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, well, I have the drink by myself. And then I just like kept having drinks. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna happen. Uh, after realistically, after we do, other than cocktails for during the podcast, I'm kind of t- I'm trying to take a tolerance break for. Yeah, understandably uh, so. Weed and alcohol understandably so yeah at least till july yeah a couple weeks i, I have a couple drinks when i play pathfinder uh, that's on fair. mondays you know but that also like it kind of helps me ease into the role play a little bit um well that makes sense it you have to be really creative and yeah but i also don't like i'm not sitting there doing shots and getting blitzed yeah you know yeah I'm like same. i'll have we usually play from like six ish to nine ish so i'll have like two yeah you know well it, oh we also did bullet that mm-hmm. day these started off at bullet on the way there i think but it was um i meant to say like all of these tastings there's basically we did a tasting at every single brewery tour we did and it's sometimes it was three shots or it was mostly like four generally um but they're all maybe like half ounce pours so each each place we're probably getting about two ounces of booze and then uh, getting cocktails in between. Yeah. Um, You're likely getting like two to three shots worth of booze. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was pretty good. And then I had at least two cocktails in most places we went to on average. Okay. So you might have actually drank like a con, but spread out. Oh, yeah. That, and that yeah. it was mostly because I knew we had to walk through mm-hmm. Louisville. uh the whole time. So yeah. it's kinda like, yeah, I gotta 
See, at a con, you, like, smash, like, four or five shots, and then you go somewhere for, like, a couple hours, and then you come back and smash, like, four or five shots. Yeah, basically. You had that spread out throughout the day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we started, our first tour started at 11 o'clock, which means we probably started sipping around 11.30 to 11.45, somewhere mm. in that realm. And then from there to about, uh, 1 o'clock, we were drinking, and then we got home. But we, uh... Went to Bullet. That was really, really cool. Uh, unfortunately, didn't really get a bourbon there because I don't think they had... They didn't really have anything special mm-hmm. available that wasn't something you can buy in the store. Um, except for the... I think I got the actual bitters that we are having right now there. Okay. So, that was at Bullet. Next day, where we did... Ca- oh, no. This is the same day. We do castle and key it's a fucking castle pretty awesome to just be able to walk around a castle that was turned into a brewery and then uh has it was a brewery like like almost like a hundred years ago shut down got completely reclaimed by the forest and just in wrecked havoc they cleaned it up shut down again got rebought out and then they finally finished it and turned it back into a brewery place <laughs> And they've only they've only been around for like uh, I think twenty sixteen. We have to they... keep them alive. That oh. sounds like it's cursed. Oh, it's it's going well though. We we got to keep them alive though. Yes. That sounds cursed. I want a fucking castle brewery. One of the coolest things about that I liked about their style is that where every buff like Buffalo Trace, Bullet, all those places, they'll usually combine like a hundred something barrels generally in mass batches. Maybe you know. 20 something or sorry 200 barrels whatever mm-hmm. it is to make sure everything you drink is consistent flavor because obviously each single barrel is going to be different it's going to have a little bit different yeah castle and key doesn't do that they basically just have a barrel and then they do that they taste what they basically will taste it and they're like all right well do we think we should age this longer or do we think it's going to get worse and they do it by the barrel so every single batch you get is a completely different flavor profile. Isn't Maker's Mark kind of like that? I think there's something to that, but we that's another tour we didn't get to go to, mm. and that's one we want to next time, but it was like a little bit off, and you know. Um, Fuck it, let's go next year. Or the year after, because you got stuff going on. Yeah, next, next year. yeah <laughs> that's going to be crazy. But we have to... Um, no, we definitely plan to go back and do the other half like another time, but uh, we had... Um, Go to the next day. It was a great time. Go to the next day. We go to Buffalo Trace. Mm. Um, or I'm skipping around. It's okay. It doesn't matter. I'm, you were drunk. I man. was drunk. Yeah, you were probably skipping around then too. Oh, I was. <laughs> so we go to Buffalo Trace, and that was a really, really, really cool tour. Uh, it had probably one of my favorite tour guides. Uh, I had a, there was two or three like Brittany and this woman Tammy. Uh, they That's were great. Mom's name. Yeah, Tammy was the one at Buffalo Trace. Nice. Mostly because I like I really loved her because she had been around the longest. She'd been in there since she'd been doing like in the buff like industry since the eighties. Okay. So she had like all kinds of crazy ass knowledge to drop just drop in and then like there was even a sign that they had hung in the museum that her husband found. Just so he and he gave that to them for free. He was like, as long as you put it somewhere where she does her tour, so that she can point it out to everyone on the tour, I'm happy with it. Give it for free. So they did. So she pointed it out. And she's like, yeah, that's really cool. You know, mm. one of my favorite parts was going into uh, it was a Rick House from 1907. And it's one of their first Rick Houses, and it was just it just it just smells just amazing because it's just like. Whiskey, yeah, tons of whiskey barrels and oak, just aged, dude. It was amazing. But we went to the gift shop. I was gonna say, speaking of Buffalo Trace, I saw that under there. Those yeah, are yours. Yeah. This is sick, buddy. There, yeah. I was like, you know what? Yeah, I gotta get you those. I did say get me a souvenir, and then I saw this when we were setting up, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, they're just, you know, nice little perfect little on square inside. ones. Yeah. Got the buffalo in the bottom of it. 
And then uh, next oh, week... That will be dangerous if we're actually playing the proper game. Yes, it will. Because you take a sip of your drink and you're like, fuck! Don't Self like it. Self-call out. I don't but, really like it either. <laughs> I love this, though. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> uh, I ended up meeting someone down there that had heard the game. And he's like, I haven't played in a long time. And I was like, well, that's what my channel was named after. Mm -hmm. And he was like, huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was pretty um, great. person I was hanging out with Saturday, um, we were looking at board games and stuff. Yeah. And then I started talking. I talked about my tattoo. And I was like, oh, yeah, I was thinking of getting, I think it was, I'm sorry for this, the game. Yeah. Tattooed on my lip that way. I yeah. just be like, ha, ha you lose. But I got Buffalo instead. And uh, she was like, oh, what's that? And I was like, oh, I can't tell you. She's like, why? I was like, you need a drink. She's like, why do I need a drink? Just tell me now. And I was like, I can't. Yeah. Not yet. I'm like, you need a drink and a ride home or somewhere to sleep. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, what? I was like, yeah. The it's, only people I tell. It's you fucked up. The only people I actually tell it to are like either old service dudes that forgot how to mm. what, forgot what it is and they're like I've played it but it's been years you know, 30 yeah. X years or like just really like random old people that it's yeah old people I'm not gonna fucking yeah know. same thing yeah. it doesn't matter I'm not gonna you know but I, most I, of the I time my, I told my grandpa about it oh he yeah he's fucking like old he's like cheers yeah <laughs> um he actually got me with it when I was down there that's funny yeah it was fucking hilarious He's like, you should. <laughs> he got me with a fucking uh, Milwaukee's best. I got tall mm. boy, man. Mm. Yeah, it hurt. Man. Fuck I, you, Papo. I love you. I'm I remember kidding. when that used to be Rico's beer. That's probably why I loved Rico. Well, the he was thing. Always drinking those. If I remember correctly, he didn't even really like it. He was just like, unfortunately, I know I write, be I write better on this specific mm -hmm. beer than any else. So he has it just for writing purposes mm -hmm. when, you were, when we were doing it. That was Shout me out and, to Rico. Um, you're awesome. I love you. Hope you're doing great in Arizona. Me with Jaeger. Yeah. I drew better when I had a fucking Jaeger bomb. And I don't know what that says about me. Uh, it's, a, it's the magic touch you know yeah but um no man other than that like i mean we just had tons of really good food the last the last plate we stayed in lexington and um one of my favorite parts we stayed in this place above an irish pub okay it was pretty nice i mean obviously like it was a bit loud because saturday night was saturday night but it wasn't the war it wasn't you know we could deal with it so it was great for us really cool room they had a porch and one of my favorite things was because that was saturday night i went and uh i had bought a cigar at that castle and key place because they had one there mm -hmm. and um i decided to uh it was ufc fight so i bought the fight and i just sat out on the porch and smoked my cigar and me and melissa just drank some evan williams masters blend on the rocks in a glass and I was just like that was our whole night for fucking like 12 hours not 12 nice. hours till midnight like 3 or 4 hours yeah well yeah cause nice. well what was even cooler so we didn't know this she didn't know this when she booked the room she just thought it was really cool in there well right next to it you walk by and there's this like big alleyway that they've dressed up as um, like a whole like restaurant hangout thing. There's like five combined businesses there. There's there's a food truck that they have stationed inside there always. Um, and then inside the place there was the bar. There was a charcuterie board place running out of there. So we got Melissa charcuterie and I ended up getting something out of the food truck. Uh, pimentos, cheese sliders. Fucking good. It's just pimento, cheese, bacon, and Nice Ch toasted bun, um, and then the cocktails were really great. They had a huge, extensive bar, and the bartenders were really cool. And basically, I when I was the first day, I just got like all of, I got a bunch of old fashions and was just like, all right, each one will try a different kind of whiskey because there's you know, <laughs> so that was great. I had about four, 
And then we went upstairs. <laughs> and, uh... Fuck. Um, we didn't get a picture of the drink. Um, we'll get in the transition, because okay. I still have some. Uh, mine, I'm drinking it quick, because it's, it's not that good. Yeah, basically. <laughs> no, honestly, it's weird. Like, it's getting better as it sits. It honestly is. Um... Yeah, I don't know. It's something... Maybe just maybe it's not a drink to start with. It's a drink to continue into. You have to have a already, because well, that's one of the cool things too about that they taught us was like sometimes they were like it, they always recommended obviously a super tiny sip the first time and and they even said like one of the guys like he's like I want you to swish it. He's like I'm making you swish it for like at least ten seconds if you can whatever but. You know, this is going to help you enjoy everything for the rest of it, I promise. And it was, you know, of course, it's great. And that's what I did every time anyway. Mm-hmm. Funny thing was, too, was like, uh, motherfuckers not, not knowing how to do wine tastings and shit. Oh, yeah. You're supposed to spit it out. No. I meant the whole, like, the when you sip through your teeth and shit. I mean, not oh, a lot yeah. of people know that, that stuff. Well, I was doing that <laughs> almost all the time. I just, you know, sip and then... Cause it like really, that's how you really taste it. And I was like, you know what? That's that's the whole. Mainly also because after you've had like two of them, you're nice. You already kind of have the numb tongue. You start getting numb tongue. Yeah. So it's really hard to. And at that point, that's when like okay, now I need this to really get start getting distinct here. It was great. You just reminded me of a TikTok I saw before we recorded, um, where it was. One guy. Do it. It tastes like chocolate. Uh, um, I will. <laughs> but there was one guy where he's like uh, sitting there. He's wearing nice clothes and he's sipping on a whiskey and he's like, mm, yes, I'm oh. getting tastes of oak and mm, this and that. And then it cuts to the other guy. And it's like, I don't give a fuck if it's one o'clock in the afternoon. What do you mean? How did I get up here? I don't fucking know. Catch me, though. <laughs> like, I'm like, that's me and Brandon. <laughs> Cheers. No, no, still tastes like cranberry with the uh, wrong. I taste. I don't know. I can start tasting the chocolate bitters, like towards the top of my mouth. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Still good. <laughs> still, still cranberry, but with a hint of wrong. That's fair. Um, that's my teenage years. Yay! <laughs> Cranberry juice with a hint of wrong. Figure it out. Figure it out. We got it. Um, but no, man, that's we did. Other than that, next day we we did a um, haven't. Oh, okay. We're far enough in. I'll, I'll the hundred and fifty dollar. Oh yeah, ounce of yeah. booze I bought. Okay. Hear me out. Before he tells you this extravagant story of him spending $150 on what? An ounce? Yes. Um, I was no, drinking, it was a two ounce, I think. Maybe an ounce and a half. I was drinking Kirkland brand, uh, which is thirteen ninety nine for a half gallon. Yes. Somebody do the math. I'll do the math in the comments. I don't care. Even calling it two ounces... Yeah. I don't think that's even a penny. No. <laughs> um, No. Okay. So basically what it was is like, so we went into the tour and obviously this isn't one of the tastings. Mm-hmm. They have, they had a couple, they had a good amount of them out there and they were great. They had Eagle Rare, which was nice to have on there and try. Obviously it was not for sale. It was sold out by the time we got there. Um, But we ended up. They had one of our favorite bars experiences. The girls there were great. They were we had, had a great time with them. Really good cocktails. Well, I'm talking with Lola, but after this tour, he's kind of explaining on the tour or not the that wasn't a tour. It was a video on the way tasting. That was it. But he's telling us like, yeah, you know, obviously like they do Pappy Van Winkle mm-hmm. and shit like that. So like they do some really extensive brands. Well, this one is like. One of their top three, like maybe, you know, two or three rarest ones is Elijah Craig 23-year single barrel. And essentially, 
the only person that makes this is their head distiller. Like it's not, I think like it's like the recipe is not known to anyone, but a certain guy who's the one that makes that one barrel worth of whiskey essentially type thing. Um, and like, as I was sitting there, like, Oh, you know what? I kind of said, fuck it. Melissa kind of was like, you know what? Hey, you haven't done anything really stupid yet. Like other than <laughs> she was like, obviously like I went and I got like, I get like a bottle at a place that, you know, like, uh, harder to find stuff. That's really yeah. hard to find in Michigan or can't. And so other than that, and even then, like none of those are breaking a hundred dollars, you know? So I wasn't going yeah. crazy on my bottles. I wanted to, and we were still looking for one, but at this point we hadn't. And it was just the end. It was like our last tour. Yeah. Second to last tour. So she was just like, you know what? Fuck it. Like it's actually there. And the woman was like, I mean, it's, it is very, very good. And I was like, okay, you know what? Fuck it. So I ordered it. I mean, for sure, easily the best whiskey I've ever had. Um, hold on. I'm going to continue this after transition. Hi. All right. Oh, shit. So, man. That's a good roll. to continue talking about this whiskey that I spent dumb money on, um, as we're, I keep talking to her about it, she like, obviously she lets me hold the bottle and take a picture of it, look at it, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And um, I end up, you know, she's talking, she ends up telling me, she's like, so it used to be 130. But the problem is, is when we start, we start getting to like the halfway point on that bottle, we are like, well, are we going to be able to replace it? And she was like, we don't know when the next batch is supposed to be ready yet. And we, so we have no idea when we'll get a bottle back. Mm. So they had to raise the price from 130 to 120 because they were like 150. Sorry. Yeah. (laughs) Raise it to a lower amount. (laughs) <laughs> business. Business, no. business, business. Yeah, 130 to 150 because obviously they're like, I mean. Yeah, you don't know when you're going to get more. So that was really cool. And then there was another one that was a little cheaper that Melissa bought me. That one was 70. Still a lot. But again, mm-hmm. this was the because the woman was like, this one's actually my favorite out of all of them. Because she's obviously like, they had old, they had every old Fitzgerald there too. Which, you know, apparently she was telling us, like, for some, like, the old Fitzes and stuff, like, they drop them. They announce on, like, Mondays and Wednesdays that they're dropping on Tuesdays and Thursdays whiskeys. And they only drop them. They basically only sell those there. So it's, like, almost impossible. (laughs) Well, just go turn that on. I'll get it. Anyways... (laughs) The the woman was telling us that like they started actually having a problem where some random woman was telling people that she was she was working for the company and that she convinced people to leave the line and that she gave them these fake vouchers she printed out that made it look like they were from the company so that she could get these you know basically move up in line and guarantee that maybe she'll get a bottle. Because that's the thing is they tell them this is dropping. They don't say how many is. It's just this. Yeah. This will be dropping. So they were like, I think, actually trying to figure out who fucking stole this, like, scammed all these people out of the line. And, like, they're like, because I guess, like, they, there was, like, four or five people that walked up with these fake vouchers. And they were like, yeah, they, we don't do that. Uh, you got scammed. Uh, and they were trying to, they all try to get descriptions. I think they're actually trying to. It's good shit. Yeah, I was like, dude. That's a fucking shit. Yeah. yeah, and that's not even for this shit. So that's why I was like, and she was like, people camp out for days. Like, they camp, they come, you know, they show up at like 7 o'clock the, next, the day before and camp out overnight so they're in line to get it. It's crazy. So. That 23-year aged barrel. Yeah. We were seven. Yeah. Like, it was one yeah. of the... It was the smoothest, one of the smoothest whiskeys I've ever had, for sure. I mean, stupid flavorful. 
<laughs> Is the card full? It might be. <laughs> well, wow. do you want to take a look? Yep. Uh, do you want a long time with Edie this time? Yeah. Hello. My Pathfinder character died a couple weeks ago when this episode drops. It was really sad. Um, he got drowned, ripped in half, and then his legs were eaten. His bird's still alive, but it was still really sad. And then my new character finally showed up in the last session, but I didn't know that my body was still there from my old character. So I got to hang out with my dead self and my old bird. But it was pretty cool. And then we almost died in that session, which would have sucked. Um, I think the camera's overheating. <laughs> this might be a very short episode. But eh, it's good to have Brandon back. It's really nice. I missed him, even though he was only gone for like a week. It's still nice. Other than that, I had a really good weekend. Well, we lost Brandon Cam. <laughs> Good thing we had it from the beginning because we fucked up main cam. Yeah, main cam was this not on. This is going to be fun to edit. <laughs> Good thing it's just me drinking. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that said. I want to call it and just smash this? Or you I'm, I'm going to say let's do that. Let's call it an early one. Yeah. Uh, I basically just talked about me drinking. The only thing left I didn't tell about was I went on a bourbon boat tour. That was really fucking cool. He basically just, he told me that there's some, some of the biggest caverns in the world, like two hours south of us in Kentucky. Are they the cheese caverns? Maybe. I want we to. We have to go. But either way, like he was saying, I like want to go there next time. And uh, at a restaurant right off the water there, we had uh, deviled eggs with bacon jam preserves on them. And it was fucking Sounds amazing. fucking bomb, dude. Um... Thank you, Melissa, for planning the trip. Thank you guys for listening. Um, Edie will talk more next time. Maybe. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Cheers, buddy.